Hello everybody, welcome to this live stream. On September the 17th, 1944, paratroopers of the 101st Airborne Division landed here north of Son. And their main objective was the bridge over the Wilhelmina Canal at Son. After fierce resistance, the Germans blow up the bridge. And today we are together here with guide Joris Nieuwind and he will tell us all about the heavy fighting for the bridge at Son in September 1944. Um, Joris, welcome uh, to this live stream. Uh, why was this bridge at Son so important during Operation Market Garden? Well, this bridge was on the main road from Eindhoven towards Vechel and beyond, of course, uh, the end uh, uh, goal of Arnhem. So this was the bridge that they had to take. Uh, they had two other bridges that they might want to capture, but those two were blown up before the operation began, so that wasn't much use. And uh, they tried to take the bridge at best, but that's a whole different story. So basically this was the bridge on Hell's Highway, which is where we're standing now. And you have also a map with, uh, with you. Um, it's good to show to our uh, followers. Where are we standing right now? So we're standing now here in the built-up area uh, near the bridge at Zon. You can see the, the drop and landing zones uh, uh, on top and this was the secondary bridge at best that they also tried to take. But we are going to focus on the capture of this bridge. So this is an aerial picture of uh, this area in 1944. It has changed, uh, changed slightly since uh, 1944. Uh, the road meandered up and down uh, towards the north um, and there were far, far fewer houses in the area. And I also have a, a, an aerial picture here, which gives a, even a better view of how this area looked in 1944. So we are now standing close to where you see the vehicles driving on the road. This picture was taken on 19 September 1944 after a resupply mission. You can see the B-24 Liberators who were pressed into service as uh, ad hoc um, uh, supply droppers. And um, um, so this is where, where we are at, at this time. Um, to take the bridge, the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, part of the 101st Airborne Division, had a simple plan, which was to fool the Germans and not take the main road on which we are standing right now. Uh, 1st Battalion 506, which uh, had the objective to take the bridge, would take not the main road, but go along the side uh, through the woods and capture the bridge from the um, western side of the village. Germans, of course, would not expect that to happen. They would expect the, 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 to take the main road. So in order to speed up as much as possible, they didn't wait on the landing zone for all the uh, troopers to assemble and then move out, which is what you normally do after a drop, but that's very time consuming. So they send out the men in twos and, in, in, no, not in twos and threes, but in, in, in twenties or thirties, and then with a, an officer, they would send them down uh, the forest roads towards the bridge. And uh, now we're also going to walk the, uh, through the main road to the bridge. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yes, we're going to follow the main road on which the second battalion of the 506 marched. They did not have the uh, objective to capture the bridge at Zon. They were to, to pass uh, across the, the captured bridge toward Eindhoven and capture the four bridges in the city center there. So this was basically the guys who were following up on the first battalion. Uh, the 1st Battalion, um, they ran into resistance, this 88mm gun, and that slowed them down considerably. And they, they also suffered numerous casualties, uh, a lot of men wounded and killed, just getting towards the bridge. And that, that delay proved fatal, because down this road, the 2nd Battalion marched. D Company up front, Easy Company behind them and behind uh, uh, F Company and then uh, the, the division headquarters, regimental headquarters and the 3rd Battalion. They were all marching down this road and they were basically having a blast. They, the, the weather was nice, the people were out, they were giving them apples and, and booze and milk and everything they wanted. Like the same weather like now, uh, Joris? Absolutely, and then of course there was a festive atmosphere because finally liberation had come and from a very unexpected uh, direction, not from the south, but from the air. But that all changed when they got here. That's why we're standing here. Because suddenly they were marching down the middle of the road and they saw a German. And that German was on his bike pedaling towards them. 
And um, the first guy up front said, uh, said, of course, hands up, and he didn't listen, so he shot him off the bike. And that's, at that same moment, an 88mm anti-aircraft gun, basically the same one we saw in the picture earlier, opened up and hit the houses on the other side of the road. So massive explosion, um, and that completely halted the advance. The 88mm was located behind us, in front of a boys' school, and that's where we're going to walk to now. Okay, great. So, um, it's, it's the, it, the area is still the same uh, after uh, 76 years? Yeah, I think after 76 years, uh, yours? No, well, not really. The road here was the main road leading towards Eindhoven for the past uh, uh, 70 years, until the, the new motorway opened, so they had to uh, widen it. And uh, all the houses, virtually all the houses that were built along this road had been taken down, demolished to make way for more traffic. Yeah, okay. only um, this building on the on the left is a is a survivor. Oh, okay. So that's the the only thing left. So it's difficult to imagine how the situation was here in um, 1944. Yeah, it is very difficult. It, uh, it was far narrower than it is now. The houses were close. Uh, uh, near the road, so there wasn't much space to maneuver. But that also meant that that gun that they that was positioned in front of us uh, had a very limited um, uh, field of fire. The reason why that gun was there was to fire across the bridge on any uh, British tanks that may appear from the south, may come from the south. Um, but now the paratroopers they came from the north. So they had to swing the gun around and they fired into the houses with a very limited f field of fire. So all that the Americans did was send a patrol around the back of the houses, which the Germans uh, could not see. And then when they got close to the gun, they opened up with a bazooka and then the bazooka shooter uh, um, uh, hit it first time in the elevation mechanism. So the gun was disabled, the 88 millimeter gun. And uh, six guys tried to run away but Sergeant Rice with a Tommy gun uh, opened up and, uh, and uh, well, killed yeah. them all, basically. But the ADAs is, uh, is massive when you fire on, uh, with ADAs on, on, on infantry. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the houses uh, on, yeah. the, on, the, on the other side of this, this small bridge uh, really took a beating, but the men just pulled back and waited for the, the small group of paratroopers to go around them and then take care of the gun. Oh, this is a picture of uh, a bazooka. Yeah, this is a picture of a bazooka gunner, not the one who, uh, who took out the, uh, the 88 millimeter, but just to give you an idea of what that weapon looked like. It's a bit of a stovepipe in which they, from which they could fire a, a missile. So, uh, I think it's really heavy to bring with you, also with the grenades, I think. Uh. Yeah, but they, were always, they always came in a team. So one was the, the, um, the gunner and the other was the loader slash ammunition carrier. And ammunition for uh, things like a bazooka, they were split up amongst the troopers. So a trooper, even though he wasn't a bazooka gunner or a loader, would jump with one or two um, bazooka rounds or a mine or a belt of machine gun ammo. So that they always had enough stuff, enough ammunition with them in case they ran out in trouble and could not be resupplied for a while. Okay. This is, uh... So this is what this is the gun that we were talking about. This is what the area looked in 1944, looking down this road towards the bridge. Um, elevation mechanism is here, so this is where the bazooka uh, uh, round hit the gun, and um, immediately the man took off. The Germans took off, and Sergeant Rice with his uh, Tommy gun. Uh, well. This, of course, ended the festive mood for the paratroopers. From now on, it was business. They had been fired upon, they had seen Germans, they had taken out Germans. And from this moment on, they took it slow. They weren't about to take any chances. So uh, Easy Company was moved up, Dog Company was moved up, and the area was split in two. Dog Company would take uh, the uh, western side of the town and Easy Company the, uh, the uh, other side. And then very methodically they move through the houses, opening door, each and every door and going through every house just to see if there weren't any Germans. But that really took all the speed out of the advance and the bridge is just, yeah, just down the road. It's not too So far. they have the bridge inside. Yes. So uh, we follow the same route as they t uh, the paratroopers were taking uh, in front of us, the, the, the bridge over the Wilhelmina Canal eh, at Son. Um, yeah, it was still intact. 
Yes, absolutely, yes. Well, the Germans were actually uh, in a slight of a panic because they were expecting the uh, enemy to come from the south. So, uh, logically, the mechanism to detonate the bridge they, that was placed on the north, the north side of the bridge, basically where we are now. And they uh, saw these uh, paratroopers landing behind them, and they now, in a very quick, uh, uh, a short amount of time, they had to, to de disconnect the, the detonation mechanism and rewire it to fire from the south bank of the Wilhelmina Canal. But unfortunately, they did a good job. They were very, uh, very well trained. And um, when the guys came closer, which was uh, about 150 to 200 yards, so really close to the bridge, all of a sudden, in a massive explosion, the bridge would go up in, uh, in a roar of fire. And um, they were hammered by falling debris. Um, Dick Winters, Easy Company, he, he wrote in his memoirs that he saw a big beam, a wooden beam, come uh, whirling down, landed close to him. Uh, but fortunately, very few or none of the paratroopers were wounded. Oh, yeah. It's also a scene of uh, the movie A Bridge Too Far, uh, when I can remember. Yes, that is correct, um, but they had a lifting bridge in the bridge too far, whereas in 1944 it was a pivot bridge. I got a picture of that here. Oh, yeah, okay. That's good to show, I think. To, mm -hmm. uh... So this was the, uh, the uh, a, a, a pivot bridge. This is where the bridge would pivot open and back. Uh, close, so there w it wasn't a traditional uh, lifting bridge as you saw in a bridge too far, uh, which came in handy because later on they could use this. But I'm, I'll get to that. Amazing! <laughs> so it was not a bridge in, in the movie, a bridge too far, uh, Joris. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing like it actually. Really, uh, the, in the, the movie they used a very traditional lifting bridge and uh, wasn't like that. So, yeah. Only I can remember when seeing the movie that they were really disappointed when the Germans blow up the bridge. Yeah, of course, this was their main objective. The, they had to take this bridge in order for Ferdicor, the, the British tanks, the British follow-up traffic, to move as quickly as possible towards Arnhem. And they failed in their first assignment when, when this bridge was destroyed. Yeah, in, in total, eh, for, for when you look at Operation Market Garden, they had to take a lot of bridges. True, it was all about the bridges in, uh, in Market Garden. Uh, the 101st Airborne had to take four bridges in Eindhoven. Uh, well, at least one of the bridges across the Wilhelmina Canal here in Son. Uh, two bridges in, in Sint Uderode, four bridges in, 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 uh, in Vechel. And that's just the 101st. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're talking about the 82nd Airborne Division, eh? the Wall Maas Bridge. So I think when they failed here, uh, then the 82nd Airborne Division and the 1st British Airborne Division at Arnhem had a huge problem. Yes, because they could not be uh, they could not be relieved. They could not be reached by the by the follow up traffic. So yeah, they they really were in uh, in uh, in a pickle. Yeah. And uh, the first objective, of course, was to cross the Wilhelmina Canal and um, make their way towards Eindhoven, because otherwise, two of the of first uh, missions they had would would, would be uh, 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 unsuccessful. But how do you cross this this canal? It's it's wide, it's deep. So uh, the commander of the first battalion, Major La Prade, he didn't consider that problem at all. He just jumped in. He jumped in and swam to the other side of the canal. There were some Germans firing on the paratroopers, which were uh, on this side where we are, and um, uh, more and more troopers either swam to the other side or took a boat or or a canoe, anything they could that would float, they would take that to fight the, uh, the Germans on the other side, get them away from the bridge as far as possible. And the Germans, of course, having done what they set out to do, destroy the bridge, delay the Americans as long as possible, mission accomplished, and they ran out into the fields and were not seen again. So yeah, and now they had a, a, a big problem because uh, how do you get uh, the, the entire 506th uh, across this canal? Well, this is where the Dutch came in and helped because the Dutch um, didn't like the Germans very much uh, during the war. They, they stole uh, uh, all the properties, they looted, uh, they, they, they um, sent the people to work camps. So anything that, that they could hide from the Germans, they would hide. 
So uh, uh, timber, beams, wood, doors, anything useful building material was hidden. But now liberation was here, so they really wanted to help the Americans uh, get across this canal. And as I said, there was in the, in the center of the, the, uh, the um, canal, there was a support structure where the, where the pivot mechanism was, which meant that they only had to cross half the canal to get across. And the Dutch, together, uh, the Dutch provided the, the, the rough building materials and the Airborne Engineer Battalion, who had jumped with the 506 for just such a possibility, came in and helped and they built a rickety footbridge across the Waal, uh, across the Waal, across yeah. the Wilhelmina Canal. Uh, so they put a, a rowing boat in, in, uh, in between the, um, uh, the, this side and the, the center section, put planks on them and then very slowly they would move uh, the entire regiment, which is more than a thousand men, across the canal and they would be ready to move towards Eindhoven. So, and then um, the vertical needs to come uh, uh, because, yeah, they, were also, uh, uh, they also need to go to Arnhem, of course. Yeah, true, true. So this is a, a picture of uh, um, uh, the actual uh, paratroopers crossing the canal. Um, so um, the building at the other side, there's another picture that, that I will show you, is still visible uh, from, from here. It it's, hasn't changed much. One of the very few buildings that actually survived. And um, so this um, this one here, this is uh, the same building that uh, uh, survived uh, on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would like to cross the road safely and then walk a, a bit uh, that direction, and then we'll I'll tell you a bit more stories. Yeah, great. And was this the uh, the first bridge the, uh, they need to capture, or? Were the bridges in, uh, before the bridges on uh, yours? Uh, no, this was actually the first bridge that they had to capture in order to secure the route towards um, towards Eindhoven. We did walk across a very small uh, bridge across the, the Dommel River, but that wasn't really an objective. It was just one of those things that they had yeah, to capture. Yeah. So, under the first step on the vision, uh, 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 objective, Wilhelmina Canal, the bridge at Son, uh, was blown up. Uh, so there were in serious problems, I think, uh, in the early stage of Market Garden. Absolutely. The plan uh, uh, was already scuppered even uh, before yeah, it yeah. really started. And um, let's move over here. Yeah. Um, um, so for the 506, their first objective, capturing this bridge, failed. And then they had to go to Eindhoven. But it was, it was almost midnight by the time that the regiment had crossed. And... Uh, Colonel Singh, the commander of the regiment, didn't think it was a good idea to go into a city of 100,000, which they didn't know at night with an unknown number of Germans. So they, they dug in uh, just a couple of hundred uh, uh, yards from where we are now. Basically all the D-Day the objectives, um, they failed. So yeah, not a very promising start. Um, well, the next day, the 101st moved out, the 506 moved out towards Eindhoven, and the thing that they needed more than anything was jeeps. Jeeps, because jeeps could transfer, transport ammunition, could transport messengers, and could transport the wounded back towards the hospital, which was uh, set up on the, uh, the drop zone. And um, uh, there was some improvisation in, involved, of course, because the, the guys who built the bridge from the airborne engineers, they now had to come up with a raft. Well, the Dutch uh, came with the, um, um, the building materials, they came with barrels, with ropes, with planks, and they set out to experiment to build a raft. Uh, so how many barrels do you need to capture, uh, to, you know, to uh, transfer a jeep to the other side of the canal? And they came up with the number 16. And this is a story that Lieutenant Young from the Urban Engineers remembers. So they built this raft and they, they parked a jeep on top of it and then they pulled it with ropes and they pulled it towards the other side. And then, of course, the raft had to go back and forth and back and forth. It was backbreaking work. It was nice and warm, so it wasn't, you know, you weren't shelled, so it wasn't the worst of jobs, but it was really a lot of work. And suddenly a Dutch farmer came and he had, uh, he had two horses with him. And the a Dutch farmer didn't speak a word of English, so he came up to the Americans and he was starting in Dutch saying, Nee, ik heb die paarden, dat is lekker makkelijk. En met die paarden kan ik dat vlot trekken. En dan hoef je dat zelf niet te doen. Nou, the, uh, the Americans had not a clue what he just said, just as what I just said, because I was speaking in Dutch. So and he was kept on pointing and, and waving and, and his horses. So the Americans think, well, okay, we, I think we just have to 
transport him across the canal because he has some business over here. So they put him on the raft, moved him to the other side, and he got off there and then he didn't walk away. He started talking in Dutch again, gibberish to the Americans, and they eventually just put him on the raft again and moved him back towards that side. And then the farmer would just gave up, you know, hands in the air thinking, whatever. And uh, later on that night, uh, Lieutenant Jong, as he told this story, he, he oh, of course he wanted us, uh, he wanted the horses to pull the raft instead of us, which would have been a nice gesture, but they never even, uh, never even crossed their mind. And, um, and then the bailing material arrives, because they also need to cross this bridge uh, to go to Arnhem. Yeah, correct. Um, uh, on, the, uh, on the 18th of September, um, the uh, bridge is reached uh, uh, Eindhoven. And then uh, the next move was to get uh, here. And uh, right after the tanks, the bridging material arrived. And during the night, uh, a replacement bridge was built, a bailey bridge. And bailey material is a bit like Lego. Um, it comes in fixed um, uh, sections which you can bolt together, uh, wooden planks, all everything. And then uh, within a couple of hours, they rebuilt a bridge across the Wilhelmina Canal. So from the time that uh, 30 Corps uh, arrived on the, uh, the south bank till the, till, they, uh, till the time they left was less than 12 hours. They started building the bridge at about 9 in the evening and 06.30 in the morning the first vehicles, the scouts, drove across the bridge and drove towards Fechel. And this, it was at that time that the that Vertical really thought that, that, that it was, it was all, all a, a done deal because now they were making the speed that they were envisioned, uh, they had envisioned during the, uh, during the planning phase. Because they left here at 06.30 and they were in center of Nijmegen at 12, but then they found out that the bridge across the Waal wasn't captured, but we already saw that in a different uh, episode, a uh, different live stream. Yeah, and, and was also fighting after the uh, uh, the Bailey Bridge was placed here. Uh, yes, yes, because the Germans they did not sit idle and uh, uh, watch how the uh, the Allies uh, rolled up uh, their lines. Um, on the evening of the 19th, which is uh, a day later, they launched a, uh, a counterattack with tanks. And um, this being a backwater, you know, all the fighting uh, uh, took place in Eindhoven or in, in, in Best or, or in Vechel. There was only one platoon on this bridge uh, to defend it. And the Dutch underground, the Dutch uh, uh, people who lived in the area to the east of where we are now, they started phoning in, they started t calling their relatives saying, look, there are German tanks here. You may want to tell the Americans that the, the Germans are launching a counterattack. And more and more of these rumors came in at the 101st Airborne Headquarters. So they sent a jeep out to, to uh, reconnoiter and see what was happening. And that jeep drove on the far bank of the, uh, of the canal. And then it saw a Panther tank that was driving towards them, driving towards the bridge. Well, in a, a bit of a Hurlikian effort, the Americans were able to move a 30, a 75 millimeter anti-tank gun from the landing zone to basically where we are now. And with its first shot, it uh, destroyed a Panther tank. And that tank then blocked the entire route, uh, causing the rest of the tanks to pull back and uh, saving the day, actually. Uh, so we can conclude. Uh, um, yeah, first phase of Market Garden, uh, and, and they already had some delays here. Uh. Yes, but it wasn't. It, it it was by no means the end of the operation. You know, the, the morning of the 19th was just uh, 72 hours into the into the operation. They were in Nijmegen uh, uh, a couple of hours later. Had the bridge at, at Nijmegen been captured, they would have been in Arnhem by the evening of the 19th, bang on schedule. So, but it wasn't. Uh, this was only the the beginning of the troubles. Yeah, the beginning of the troubles. You have uh, also uh, a picture uh, that was. Um Made, uh, is it still the same building on the other side, or is it uh, made from? This is still there on the, this side, or no? okay? Yep, yep. It's, uh, it looks a bit uh, worse. It looks a bit worse for wear. You can see the tiles have already been uh, uh, been uh, taken a beating from the the fighting that went on. You know, that tank uh, that came this way sh shelled the uh, shelled the bridge area and probably also hit the uh, the cafe that which uh, which it was at that time. But it's one of the very few survivors uh, of, uh, of 1944 that is still visible. But two houses uh, behind us are also visible. So this one was taken um, um, from, the, um, from the south bank looking north. And these houses here 
uh, uh, also have survived. But uh, recently, like uh, they're still completing that structure, and they're now build a new apartment complex uh, in, almost in front of them. So another uh, line of sight is now uh, something of the past. Yeah, a, a, a great story here around the, so uh, the br bridge at Son. You have many stories to tell, I think, uh, yours, especially about the 101st Airborne Division. You're also making some videos, huh? Yeah, correct. Um, uh, I, I do uh, YouTube videos as well uh, on a YouTube channel, uh, The Battlefield Explorer. And I'm working on a new series called Dodge Adventures, in which I use my World War II Dodge uh, to go around the market garden area and beyond and shoot some interesting uh, video about what happened. So the first one in that series is about Robert Cole and the fighting of the 502nd at best, which, uh, which went live last month. And now I'm working on a new one uh, about the, the fighting at Koevering. So uh, yeah, we will post a link under this uh, uh, live stream so that people can also see your uh, YouTube videos. And you're also doing guided tours? Correct, yep, yep, but the whole package. So uh, yeah, I do mostly market garden tours. So anything from Arnhem uh, up to the, uh, the Belgian borders. And uh, um, I also uh, do a bit of easy company touring, uh, which goes uh, beyond uh, where we are now. So uh, when the, the COVID restrictions are lifted, I think people need to go on tour with you, uh, Joris. Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. And uh, the next episode is also with you in uh, Koevering. Uh, well, not Koevering, but in Vechel, yeah, Black Friday. That is the first time that the Germans were able to block the road for, for over 24 hours. So uh, around the Hell's Highway? Yes, the, on the Hell's Highway, yep. yep. Okay, great. Thanks for watching. Uh, the next episode, we are back with Joris, uh, Black Friday. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, especially see this next episode with, uh, with Joris. Thank you very much.